Hey everyone, in this video series, we'll be covering the basics of auto layout. As covered in our previous segment, Locofy reads your Figma auto layout settings and constraints to generate responsive code. On top of that, Locofy lets you further customize your design to work on different screen sizes to achieve effects such as showing a hamburger icon or stacking elements on a smaller device. If you want to learn more about how this works, do check out our previous video. For this guide, we'll be focusing on auto layout basics for responsive code. So what is auto layout? Auto layout is a powerful setting in Figma that you can apply to frames to create designs that respond to changes in layout size and changes in content. Why is this useful? With Auto Layout, you can create a user interface that dynamically adapts for all screen sizes without needing to manually set the size and position for every possible screen size. On top of that, it can adapt to content changes. For example, this card may be populated with data from your database, and we want to make sure that it looks great regardless if the data has text that spans three lines four lines or more. You can do this with auto layout. Applying auto layout to your designs is very simple. There are just a few basic properties to take note of. Layout direction is the most basic property for auto layout. Inside an auto layout frame, all elements are arranged either in horizontal or a vertical direction. In this example, we have a simple navigation bar. It's a frame with some elements inside. Let's apply auto layout. As you can see, this auto layout frame is in a vertical direction. And we can easily switch this to a horizontal orientation by toggling the direction property. What if we have a layout like this, where there is no clear alignment of items? If we apply auto layout directly, they would be placed just like this. To take care of this is easy. We'll just need to further group the items so that we have some clear rows or columns. We can select these two items and apply auto layout first. This would have a horizontal direction. Then we can apply auto layout to these two items. Finally, we can apply auto layout to the entire frame since now its children can be easily arranged in a vertical direction. That's how you can easily break down a design into smaller pieces to apply auto layout. Padding is a very straightforward property. It helps you to add some space between the frames and the child layers. You can adjust the padding by dragging the pink handles in the canvas or by editing the values in the settings panel. When applying auto layout to your design, you may notice some movement in your design. This is because Figma tries to calculate the padding values to set for the auto layout frame. Figma attempts to keep the top and bottom padding equal and the left and right padding equal. Originally, there was a space of 40 on the left and 80 on the right. And after applying auto layout, you'll notice that Figma chooses the smaller value to set as both the left and right padding. A similar calculation is applied to the top and bottom padding. In case you want to maintain the look of your original design, you can simply edit the padding to recover the space between the elements and the frame. Alternatively, you can also stretch the width and height of your frame to restore it to the original design. Alignment is very intuitive and can be visually understood by looking at this box over here. It helps you to keep your designs neat and consistent. There are two things to note. Firstly, as you change the alignment of your items, padding is still respected. 
So if you have your elements aligned towards the right, they will move all the way to the right, but not into the right padding of the auto layout frame. Secondly, in an auto layout frame, all items must follow the same alignment. In this example, the element is not quite top aligned, but not center aligned either. Here's what happened when we apply auto layout. Now, to handle this, instead, you can simply add another auto layout frame around this group and apply padding to it. Now, when we apply auto layout to the outer frame, this element maintains its distance from the top. So that's how you can easily apply auto layout to your frame with elements that you want to keep slightly out of alignment. The space between items property of a auto layout frame helps to define the gap between its children elements. You can adjust the spacing by dragging the pink handle in the canvas itself or by editing the value in the settings panel. Note that in an auto layout frame, the space between the child elements are always equal. You cannot have different spaces between the items. But what if we want a layout that requires different spaces? For example, we have a navigation bar with the icon on the left and menu links on the right. If we directly apply auto layout, all the items will be evenly spaced. To handle this is easy. We can simply apply auto layout to the links over here first, since they already have an equal spacing. Then we can apply auto layout to the entire frame. There is now an equal spacing between all the items for this auto layout frame, as there is only one spacing. Easy. We've learned that elements in auto layout frames are arranged vertically or horizontally with a constant space between them. This is very useful in presenting contents like text and images in a neat way. But what if we have some floating design elements that we do not want to include in the layout for our contents? We can handle this easily with the absolute in auto layout setting. In this example, we have a frame with some contents that we want to arrange vertically. We can apply auto layout here easily with no problems. But if we include this floating design element and apply auto layout, you'll see that it's included as part of the arrangement. This is not what we're aiming for. To handle this just takes a few simple steps. First, remove the floating element from the frame, then apply auto layout you can then bring the floating element back into the frame. And for this element, click the Absolute Position button. You can now move this anywhere you want inside of the frame. You can also set its constraints to define how it should be positioned as the frame resizes. This should stick to the right side of the frame, so we can apply the right constraint. Perfect. This is how you can easily apply auto layout to frames that contain floating elements. Once you've applied auto layout to your designs, you're just one step away from making your designs responsive. Here are the settings that you can apply. Fill container is a setting that lets your child elements resize according to the size of the parents. In this example, we have an auto layout frame with elements inside. As we stretch the frame, you notice that the elements inside remain static. That's because these elements have a fixed width setting. If we want this element to also resize along with the parent, we can set its width to fill container. You'll see now that it takes up all the available space in its parent. And as we continue to adjust the size of its parent, the element resizes accordingly. If we open up the Locofy plugin and check out the preview that runs on live code, you'll see that it produces the same behavior. In this other example, we've set the image to fill container for its width and also for its height. 
this block of text has a fixed width. As we resize the frame in Figma, you'll see that the image now takes up all the available space for both width and height. Once again, you'll see the same behavior in the Locofy plugin preview. If you notice that you've set an element to fill container, but it doesn't seem to resize, do make sure to check that the inner elements are also set to fill container. And that's how you can apply the fill container setting so that the child elements resize along with the parent frame. Do note that the fill container setting only appears when the parent is an auto layout frame. If the parent is a group or a normal frame, the fill container setting will not be available. Hard Contents lets your parent's frame respond to changes in the size of its children. Typically, when you resize the width of a parent's frame, you want the width of this child elements to resize as well. What usually happens is that it causes the height of its child element to increase as well, and it may sometimes overflow out of the parent's container. You'll notice the same behavior on the Locofy preview running on live code. This is because the height of the container is fixed. If you want the parent's height to respond to his children, you can instead set the height to hug contents. Now you'll see that it adjusts as the child grows in height. Once again, this is reflected in the Locofy preview. If you notice that you've set a parent container to hug contents, but it doesn't seem to resize accordingly, do check if the inner elements also have hug contents applied to them. To make your designs responsive, one option is to have the child elements resize along with the parent frame. This can be achieved using the fill container setting covered in the previous segment. Another option is for the space in between the items to resize along with the parent's frame. Typically, when you apply auto layout, you'll find that a constant spacing is applied between each element. This remains a fixed value when you stretch or shrink the parent's frame. If you want these spaces to resize along with the parent, you can apply the space between setting by clicking on these three dots and change the spacing mode from packed to space between. You'll notice that the value for spacing is now auto, which means that it expands to fill all available space as the parent resizes. This is also reflected accordingly in the Locofy preview that runs on live code. This space between setting is another great option you can use to make your auto layout frame responsive. With that, we've come to the end of the guide for Figma Auto Layout Basics and how to get responsive code. In the next segment, we'll be showing you the different types of Locofy settings you can apply on top of your responsive Figma layout to achieve common use cases like navigation bars with hamburger menus on smaller devices, multi-column layouts, and more. We hope you enjoyed this guide and have fun building and launching faster with Locofy.